السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم All praises due to Allah from whom we seek health and forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah from the evil of our own souls and from those of our bad deeds. Whomsoever Allah guides will never be led astray. Whomsoever Allah leaves astray, no one can guide. I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship, no God except Allah, the one who has no partner. I bear witness that the Prophet Muhammad is Allah's true servant and messenger. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him. Allah tells us in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amun, taqullah haqqa tuqatihi, wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun, that O ye who believe, be mindful of Allah. Be mindful of Allah in the way that Allah deserves, and do not die except in a state of full submission to Allah. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yasir li amri, wa ahlul uqdata min lisani yafqahu qawli, subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma'alamtana. I pray that may Allah open my chest, make easy for me this task, and loosen the knots of my tongue that these words may be understood. And glory be to you, Allah, glory be to you, that we have no knowledge except that which you have taught us. Verily, it is you who is all-knowing, all-wise. Again, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu, Jumma Mubarak to you all, particularly during this sacred time uh, of the month of Muharram. And we want to lift up some uh, reflections for this month that inshallah transcend any particular differences that we may hear about Muharram uh, or that may come about. Uh, we we oftentimes uh, are maybe told Muharram is this or Muharram is that or this is the way to, uh, these are the proper things to do in Muharram or these are the proper things to do or not do. Uh, and and oftentimes uh, this, this type, uh, this dichotomy uh, and dividing of Muharram uh, is, is it takes away some of the blessings and the benefits uh, and the takeaways that we can all uh, be able to have and incorporate within our own lives, regardless of what stripe uh, of Islamic tradition or the Muslim community we come from. Uh, this is a month that has significant, uh, you know, bearings and has a very significant as a uh, significance for Muslims, regardless of if they're Sunni, Shia, or any uh, type of background that they're coming from. Uh, and has a very shared significance in that way. Uh, and it's important for us to see within the wider understanding of this month, uh, seeing the respective, not just narratives and, and the significances of this month from the different communities and, and whatnot, uh, that having a holistic picture of this month gives us uh, a good insight with respect to how we can not only participate in this month, but also how, what we can do uh, for our day and age where we are now, what are some takeaways that we can get from this month? But as a cursory view, as just kind of an overview, thinking about when we when we reflect on the month of Muharram, we think about themes that come to mind, such as uh, adhering to one's faith, uh, standing up for justice, uh, the importance of family, the importance of sacrifice uh, that, that comes, especially in the way of one's faith, um, the importance of uh, mourning, the importance of grief, uh, the importance of processing that grief, uh, the importance of community. So many different things uh, come away from us uh, when, we, when we think about uh, the month of Muharram that oftentimes get lost because we uh, we begin to associate Muharram just as one particular thing or just one instance or whatnot, or we're given that kind of uh, of an intro introduction to Muharram or a practice of Muharram that doesn't give a fuller picture of what's going on. So just as a, uh, a brief overview in general as well, uh, that as we are in the month of Muharram, we understand that this is one of the most sacred months in the Islamic calendar, uh, that it is one of those four months in which in the tradition that fighting and uh, warfare are prohibited. Uh, it's understood also to be amongst the second most holiest months after the month of Ramadan. Um, and it has, as I mentioned, a very special significance, both for, Muslim, for Muslims of any stripe, um, especially for Muslims who are Sunni as well as, and, and Muslims who are Shia. Uh, in uh, Sunni understanding, you know, it's, it's understood that uh, the day of Ashura, the day uh, within the month of Muharram, the 10th day of Muharram, the day of Ashura, uh, this the significance that comes about especially uh, is around this day and this is a day that uh, you know has has been understood through tradition to mark uh, the divine favor within uh, humanity that Allah's uh, you know 
deliverance of the Hebrews and the Israelites from bondage of Egypt, um, shepherded by Musa, you know, parting the sea, all these different things were done on Ashura, but also connecting to other uh, events in the prophetic chain when it comes to Nu or Yusuf or Adam uh, has been seen as uh, the day of Ashura being the day in which significant things happen for uh, each of these prophets and, and the observance that's then made or the uh, the action that is then given or uh, practiced is this concept of also fasting in, in observance of this, not just um, for the historical reasons of, of doing this or the shared reasons, but also uh, as a way for us to be able to be mindful of our moment in time where uh, we may forget God's favor upon us. We may forget, um, you know, be, become unmindful of Allah. Um, as a way to expiate our sins, as a way to cleanse ourselves, as a way to reset ourselves and to gain our bearings, because we know that what Allah has done uh, in, in history is not lost on us. And especially as people of faith, we know that such deliverance is not uh, just one off things. These are things that uh, can happen for us as well in different ways. And on the by contrast, though, by in another space that that's one part of Muhammad, that's one part of Ashura, but that's oftentimes the ba the main thing we get probably blasted to us is, is as soon as uh, we see Muhammad come around, we may see social media campaigns or Instagram ads or whatnot says, be sure to fast on this day, be sure to do this. And there's very much significance and importance to that. However, it oftentimes comes at the expense and at the exclusion of how this month is observed, how this time of year is observed, especially for our Shia siblings, um, for whom this time of Muharram, and especially the day of Ashura, uh, are very difficult days. They're very um, solemn days, um, somber days that are uh, observed not by joyous you know, celebration or anything like that, but uh, through uh, deep reflection, meditation, contemplation, and community uh, that commemorate the, uh, the martyrdom of Hussein ibn Ali, of Imam Hussein ibn Ali, who was the grandson of the Prophet and the son of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Uh, and uh, just as the, the history kind of goes, and you can look into this more for yourself of uh, in terms of the events of Karbala, in terms of Imam Hussein and uh, what he stood for. But Imam Hussein essentially uh, refused on moral grounds to give his bayah, give his pledge to the Umayyad uh, Caliph at the time, the Khalifa at the time, uh, Yazid ibn Muawiyah, um, for a variety of reasons, but uh, often uh, times seen as uh, Yazid uh, ibn Muawiyah and uh, the Caliphate at that time as it was becoming was very much, uh, you know, descending from that which uh, the Prophet Sallallahu and the likes of Ali ibn Abi Talib had set it up to be, and 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 as it was rooted within the Islamic tradition, rooted uh, within Islamic principles, that it was where uh, you know kind of uh, just going astray off course and going going off course in that way, uh, detaching itself from those principles and becoming much more worldly in an aspect, and so uh, seeing the different injustices that were becoming manifest, seeing the uh, the the you know, mantle of this leadership going in a direction that was not what was maybe intended by or set as a foundation by the Prophet or by any of the subsequent Khulafa, that this was something that uh, Imam Hussein had, had uh, refused to do. And as a result, um, you know, it, it, to, to make things kind of short, uh, leading a party of his supporters, of his family, of his uh, family members um, that uh, stood up against what was going on to to, to uh, that were standing up against this injustice who were brutally martyred um and on the plains of Karbala um on Ashura and so you have uh, this this uh day that is observed amongst our Shia siblings and our uh, Shia sisters and brothers as a day in which uh, not just this tragedy had occurred, but in which uh, Imam Hussein had taken like the ultimate stand against oppression, against injustice, uh, against uh, you know the tyranny that is there, but uh, stood up for the faith, stood up for what was right, and and left a timeless example for how each of us, for uh, Muslims, regardless of where we come from or what we look like or where where we are, uh, that we each live into that substance of being able to follow that example of always standing up for justice, always being able to do what is right, even in the face of insurmountable odds. Um, there's a saying that uh, that is uh, attributed uh, often to Imam Jafar Sadiq, that is, uh, Kul yom ashura wa kul ard karbala, that every day is Ashura, every land is Karbala, 
um, and it's often interpreted that in every period, you know, people have, Muslims have this obligation that if we fulfill them and do them on time and do them right, uh, that we will, you know, the, the that there will come about that justice, that there will be this cultivation of humanity, this restoration of humanity uh, and peace and true justice that comes about. Uh, and so you have this timeless example that was left, but again, in a way that's very somber, in a way that's very difficult, in a way that is not uh, celebra celebrated um, with a lot of pomp or anything like that, but very solemn in nature. But we oftentimes see that not only is that narrative excluded, or sometimes the narrative is not shared, despite it being something that transcends any particular community of belief. It's something that's a part of Islamic history, uh, that it oftentimes as well leads to, uh, because the marginal, uh, marginalization of many of our Shia siblings in different parts of the world, oftentimes leads to acts of violence against these communities, um, and an injustice against these communities that are uh, that are observing the hallmark of justice uh, that was being observed. And, and so it's a tragedy in, in modern times as well to be able to kind of see how uh, within our community, different narratives are not seen as a way of being able to kind of see the complementing and the shared beauty of this month, the difficulty of this month, the substance that this month has to offer for us, and rather becomes a wedge that further divides the community. And it's important for us at this time to be able to think about, regardless of where we may fall as a community, regardless of what we might identify as, we are able to draw the benefit and, and uh, recognize the sacredness across the spectrum, um, that whether we observe our fasting on the 10th of Muharram or on any other days as well, we don't have to do it at exclusion of recognizing uh, and feeling the difficulty and the grief and the pain that uh, our, our Shia siblings feel um, in commemorating the loss of and the martyrdom of Imam Hussein, because Imam Hussein, it was not just a Shia issue. It was Imam Hussein's loss, uh, given who he was, given the grandson of the Prophet, being somebody who resembled the Prophet, being somebody uh, with numerous traditions stated about his significance, that his loss was a loss for the Ummah. And just as we may feel the pain of a relative or a loved one who may have passed and we come across that anniversary and we feel and we remember the difficulty, uh, remember all these different memories that are there. Similarly, when Imam Hussein had passed away uh, and, and was, was martyred uh, during this time, it's also maybe a call for us to reflect, particularly on the matters of justice, particularly on the matters of standing up for oppression, which are ever pervasive in our world. What are we doing? about it. What did Imam Hussein stand for? What did he? What was he taken down for? Uh, and what are we kind of doing about it here? So thinking about, for us, as, as I mentioned, that the martyrdom of Imam Hussein is understood to be the kind of that symbol of sacrifice, the symbol of standing up for justice against injustice, a uh, clarion call for all Muslims, regardless of your background, to do that which is right, no matter the cost. Um, it's also a month that is understood of sacrifice in that aspect of uh, expiating, of uh, being able to not lose our connection to Allah, to not forget that uh, the favors of Allah upon us. So as we think about uh, whether the events of the past or the liberation of the Hebrews from uh, the bondage of Egypt or any of these other favors that Allah is uh, at work consistently in our lives and through these miracles, but also through the ordinary day and day that we don't forget our connection to Allah. And it's important for us to think about now what are the takeaways for us? What are the things that we want to reflect on? We, we, we lifted up a few just in the beginning here, but just to, just to reiterate those. So in thinking about not just Imam Hussein uh, and, and the sacrifice that he made and the sacrifice his family made and the sacrifice that uh, his followers made um, you know, against all odds and, and at the expense of uh, you know, just the, 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 the establishment that was there, um, thinking about what the significance of adhering to one's faith, thinking about what's the significance of family, what's the significance of sacrificing in the way of Allah in general, what's the significance of community, what's the significance of grief as well and mourning. And so it's important for us that as we take away uh, this month of Muharram, as we are in this month of Muharram, just under halfway through, uh, not just to sit in the moment that we are right now, but looking forward and looking ahead, how this month can continue to influence us and be able to impact us as we live our day-to-day -day lives. Again, what, what did Muharram tell us about uh, adhering to one's faith? We see that uh, both in the example 
of Imam Hussein, uh, that he, as he stated by his own quote, that I do not revolt due to discontent with God's blessings, nor out of arrogance. I did not rise as a corrupter or nor as an oppressor. Rather, I wish to call reform for reform in my nation or in the nation of my grandfather. I wish to call for what is good and to forbid what is evil. I wish to follow the tradition of my grandfather and my father. So him seeing just how far the, uh, you know, the, the mantle of leadership had, uh, you know, just kind of gone wayward and how, uh, how far off course it had gone uh, and away from the basic principles and the foundations upon which it was established by the Prophet and his grandfather, by Ali Ibn, Ibn Abi Talib, his father. Um, this was something that he couldn't sit still by. He couldn't uh, let go idly. He had to do something. He had to lift up his voice. He had to, you know, organize, do whatever it was, but he had to do something. He had to take some kind of action. And he, at the least, you know, by not uh, giving his his support or not feeling like, hey, the lesser of two evils, I got to cast my vote for one of the two. So let me just do that. He uh, took a stand and he and 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 uh, the the consequences were dire for for what had occurred. The the consequences were very severe for what had happened. Um, but the example that was left was timeless. That how do we adhere to our faith at this time? Not just in the example of Imam Hussein, but also when we look at the traditions of the fasting that were there. Um, that as the Prophet Sallallahu had observed, you know, a group of, of Jews that were fasting um, in, in commemoration of uh, being liberated, you know, be, having the, their, their ancestors, uh, the Israelites being liberated from, uh, you know, the uh, bondage of Pharaoh, from the bondage of Egypt, that this fasting that was being done in commemoration, that you have the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi saying that, to the Muslims that you have a, a, a greater right to be fasting on this day as well, that if it's not just for them, that you need to be fasting too, uh, that Allah's favor is not lost upon you, that you, the, the, the haq of it, the, 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 uh, the requirement of it is something that you should be doing as well. And so uh, you see this aspect of us thinking about what's the important of us, importance of us, not just adhering to our faith, not just holding on to our faith um, at, at times where it's very convenient, but at times where we might feel that uh, it may not be, you know, just something that we're thinking about, oh, hey, Ramadan's not around here. So why am I thinking about fasting? No, remember the favor of Allah. Remember that Allah's hand has not been just at work uh, just within this time here, but Allah has consistently been at work throughout. So what, what does it mean for us to adhere to our faith, especially where we are today in the day and age where injustice is pervasive all across the world? How do we adhere to our faith in this particular space? And what's the importance of it? even against all odds. Thinking about what is the importance of family. Imam Hussein Nordilan was the grandson of the Prophet and was the son of Ali ibn Abi Talib. And many of those who uh, were martyred alongside him were his family members, were his supporters, were people who were family members of the Prophet Sallallahu And thinking about uh, in this aspect, the importance of family, you know, it's, it's, it's 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 hard to be able to reconcile this sometimes when we're like, hey, I might not be from the best family or my family doesn't treat me the best way or I have a difficult relationship with my family. And I remember this uh, saying that, you know, you can choose your friends. You can't really choose your family, um, that you can choose your friends. But the only thing you can really give your family is that healthy degree of love. It doesn't mean a blind kind of a love where it's just like, OK, I'm going to ignore whatever, uh, you know, things that might be going on that might be problematic. But you give them a healthy kind of a love where sometimes boundaries are set, sometimes different things are done. But families try and stay close together despite their differences, despite how they kind of navigate things. But keeping those ties of kinship, however, is able to be done uh, with the proper you know, of course, boundaries and things like that that are set um, so that there's not harm being done. But the importance of us thinking about what does family mean at this time? Uh, for Imam Hussein, for people, for his community, family was everything. You know, they they uh, they they saw that they had a family member who was standing up for injustice or standing up against injustice, standing up for justice uh, against all odds. And they they took his side. They 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 said we're we're going to stick with him. We're going to go with him. Um, they they didn't. Uh, they 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 put their principles. Uh, they didn't. They didn't put you know their own safety or anything like that above their their principles. They they stood on their principles and also stood on this important fact of uh, that this is one of our family members and we should also who's standing up for something that's right, standing up for something that's good. We should also support this person uh, regardless of those consequences. So thinking about for ourselves, how do we cultivate a deeper sense of trust, a deeper sense of uh, reliance, and a deeper sense of spiritual companionship and connection with our families if we don't have that but also 
when our family members stand up for something that's right, what's our attitude? Are we like the people that uh, maybe are more naysayers or like, uh, you know, the, the people who uh, detract them or the people who like the family of Imam Hussein stood up with him and said, I'm going to, I'm going to go with you regardless of what your age was, whether you're a kid or whether you're an older person, we're going to stand up with you. And in that same element, the aspect of sacrifice that uh, Allah calls for us to sacrifice, uh, not just in, 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 in ways that are in the spiritual sense, but also uh, calls us to sacrifice that which may be uh, of our nourishment. We see that in Ramadan from our food that we sacrifice uh, for the purpose of fasting, but we also see the holistic sacrifice uh, that's made in the example of Imam Hussein, that not just the sacrifice of one's life, but one's time, one's wealth, honor, one's you know uh, livelihood in a sense for the sake of what's right. Um, and when we see the commemoration of fasting in a sense uh during this time that's important for us that when when we see the fasting that is prescribed for us or that the process had had told his community to participate in um during the month of ashura or sorry during the month of ramadan during ashura um that this is also a way of showing gratitude to allah is by sacrificing it may feel you know kind of weird you were in a society where it's like hey you had something great happen um or something great happened to you go celebrate go do this go you know add on to what ha whatever's happening there and within the spiritual sense we have a we have a way of celebrating that uh is, is by showing that gratitude and sometimes it is by abstaining from uh something that nourishes our physical self so what is the importance of sacrifice for us at this time um, when we think about uh, what are we sacrificing, what is the sacrifice that we may be making uh, at our time when we reflect on God's favor? Are we donating something? Are we giving of what we have? You know, Imam is saying that everything to lose had nothing really much to gain uh, from, from what was going to come about here, but we saw what was to gain was not quantifiable. And for us, when we maybe have a fear of sacrificing in the way of Allah, what is it that we have to lose? Uh, and what is it that we have to gain? We have so much to gain that can't be quantified in that way. And last thing, thinking about the last two things in a sense, one, um, the aspect of community uh, that Imam Hussein uh, was was as, as much as the figurehead of this movement, the figurehead of the standing up for uh, against injustice and standing up for what's right. Uh, Imam Hussein was surrounded uh, by uh, a close, small, tight-knit community of people, um, you know, many of whom, if you go to the majalis or the majlis of our uh, Shia siblings, you'll hear uh, their inspirational stories of, you'll, you'll be able to recount, um, you know, their different acts of heroism and, and the tragedies that they also befell, but how, how they were a part of this, uh, this tragedy as well, but how they left their mark as an example for us, thinking about uh, in community, we can always stand on, on our own two feet in different ways, but we're always needing to have some type of connection uh, for something that is sustainable, something that is going to make a real difference. So think about what is, uh, for us, in a sense, this reflection on community. Also, we think about fasting, that our Prophet has, uh, saw a group of Jews fasting. They weren't fasting solo, they were fasting together. Um, that you fast individually, but you do it as a community. And he invoked it to the community to go and fast um, and do and, and participate in that fast. And uh, something that can be a community thing, because when we're when we are especially in times where we may be on the margins, it's more important for us to be able to recognize how we are more like the bricks of a house together versus something that is just not going to mesh. We may have our different personalities or different ethnicities or different things, but these spiritual practices remind us that we are, in fact, one community. When you line up in prayer, when you go for that fast, regardless of what, whether you're a doctor, engineer, person with no education or day laborer, whatever it might be, might be Pakistani, might be Arab, might be African, whoever you might be, um, but you are one in that ummah. And so these spiritual practices help cultivate that aspect of the community. And the last thing that we'll lift up is uh, Maharam reminds us the importance of grief. It reminds us the importance of reflecting on death. And it reminds us the importance of not forgetting of those who walked before us uh, and those who gave their lives, gave sacrifice for us to be where we are today. Um, that it, uh, the Prophet had told his companions that, you know, to visit those who are deceased, to visit the graveyards, because it's a reminder of the hereafter. It's a reminder of our, uh, you know, limited life that we live in this world. So it's, in, it's important for us to subsequently think about during this month as well, how do we take away 
not just a deeper meaning or not just seeing that, oh, why, you know, why are the, the Shia Muslims just grieving Imam Hussein? He passed away a long time ago, and, and this this is not how Muslims grieve or whatnot. But think about in the same significance in a sense that feeling that living connection to the Prophet, to the members of the Prophet, to have that love for the Prophet and the family of the Prophet should give us an in, in indication as well how we may have and show some love for our uh, own folks who may have passed away, especially for uh, Imam Hussein and, and for uh, the Muslims who passed away with him, but also to be able to feel that wider connection. It's easy to say we're a community, we're one Ummah, but we also not just celebrate together, we should also grieve together. Um, and whether we have a difference of opinion on how we grieve in, in this particular way, but to just recognize that this is a month in which there is a somber overtone, there is a, a, a solemn nature to it, what does it tell us about um, you know, when our loved ones pass away or how we may process this or how we may deal with grief, how we might reflect on death, but also uh, what will what will our kind of legacy be? You know, what when we pass away, what is it going to be that is on our obituary? What is it that our people will share about us? And how can that inspire us or motivate us to start to take some action, start to do what we can so that what we leave behind is that which is also a timeless thing, just like Imam Hussein had left behind. So it's important for us to think about Ashura and the month of Muharram has so much to offer us. Um, but it's important for us to not go through this month with tunnel vision, thinking what's right, what's wrong there, to be able to be open-minded and see how does the Muslim community as a whole observe this month? How does it observe this month in their particular nuances? What are the shared meanings? What are the shared things that are there? Not just one thing or the other, um, but to be able to lift up uh, how uh, each of these different things, these different significances have so many things for us to offer, so many benefits for us to offer. So may Allah allow us to be a people with a clarity of mind, um, to not be able to view something and, and look at it from a lens of suspicion or look at it from a lens of uh, you know just undercutting it, but to be a people that look at the glass half full and to be able to see uh, the the holistic meaning and the significance that is there, regardless of where it may be uh, coming from, but the benefit that it has to add us. And may Allah enable us to see past our own shortcomings, to be able to see past our own blinders, uh, and to be able to really benefit from uh, the holistic uh, benefit of this month, uh, the spiritual significance that this month has to offer um, for us, whether we're Sunni, whether we're Shia, whatever flavor of Islam we are, that we go through this month in a way that is mindful uh, of who has also gone through this month, not forgetting that Allah's hand and Allah's uh, presence and Allah's favor has been transcendent throughout this month and continues up to this day. The question we want to ask ourselves is how will we continue recognizing that and what will we do for the next generation of Muslims who will come after us? Just as Imam Hussein left his legacy, stood for what was right there, just as uh the favor of Allah had been displayed before and to be displayed on the Muslim community before. How will we leave our legacy? How will we find Allah's favor displayed upon us for the people who come after? May Allah enable us to do so and may Allah enable us to see these things through and to leave this place better than we found it um, and to allow us to walk in those same footsteps that the Prophet Sallallahu and all the Prophets and Imam Hussein and all the Imams had walked through as well. Wa akhruwa da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.